I'm here at the Gunner Kennel Retail Facility in Nashville, Tennessee. We have a lot of clients with Gunner Kennels in their home and I've been seeing them for years. Today, I'm gonna to pressure test a couple of them to see how tough they really are. And I'm also gonna walk you through all of the pros and cons. I'm here with Joe Graves. He is the CEO, correct? Correct. Awesome, well, thank you for having me. We appreciate it. Uh, thank you for giving us these kennels because we are gonna work them hard today. We're gonna to shoot them with a shotgun. We are gonna hit them with a tractor. We're gonna throw them out of the truck while we're hitting 60 miles an hour. So. Just want to make sure you don't want these things back, right? We, we don't. You can test it <laughs> as many ways as you want. All right, appreciate that. Yeah. So, anything you want to tell us about these kennels before we get started? Absolutely, yeah. yeah. A few really cool things about the kennels. Um, they're all double wall roto molded, so they're constructed just like a Yeti cooler. Um, so really durable in any sort of conditions. Um, they're made right here in the USA. I love that. Yeah, um, and then they're five-star crash tested. So um, we hope you're not ever in an accident with your dog, but if you are, you can be confident that they're going to be safe. Cool. I'm going to drive careful today, so hopefully no accidents, but I'm going to work these things pretty hard. One last question for you. If I climb in one of these things, do you think I could kick my way out? Uh, absolutely not. Okay. You can give it a try. <laughs> we're, we're going to test it. We get calls from people with some wild dogs who are worried about their crates, so I'm going to see how tough it is today. Awesome. Give it your best shot. Awesome. Thanks, Joe. Appreciate yeah. you. Oh, luckily, these things are not heavy at all. Now, these kennels are made to be strapped down in the bed of a truck. So that's what a lot of people, hunters, you know, and other people are using them for. A lot of our clients have these in their house or they have them in the back of their minivan or the back seat of a truck. So you don't have to put it in the bed, but this is one of the functionalities of them. They have these really cool pins on the side and they have their own tie down straps. So the idea here is that you can get it secure All right, we got everything loaded up. It is about 90 degrees out here, so I broke a sweat. Those kennels are heavy and there's a lot of them. We're gonna have a great day. The first thing I'm gonna do is walk you through all their pros and cons as soon as we get back to the facility. After that, I'm gonna really start pressure testing these. The gun test is gonna be a lot of fun. Definitely stay tuned. I've got a special guest coming who's gonna help us out. It's gonna be pretty awesome. We are back at the facility with our crates. You can see we have all four sizes Gunner currently makes. We have a small, we have a medium, we have an intermediate, and we have a large. Now, there's a lot of questions on medium and intermediate. I think people are often confused about the difference. Intermediate is a lot bigger than the medium. So this is the most common size we see clients using. The large is great, but it is pretty darn big. Now, if you are trying to figure out what size crate to get for your dog, I want you to watch our sizing video. During that video, we dive into everything you need to know. We measure a couple dogs, we measure the crates, we show you, you know, the exact dimensions of every single one, and we also show you how to size it appropriately for travel versus home, because those are two different use cases and you need a different size crate for travel versus home. Today though, we're gonna be working with our intermediate, so I'm gonna walk you through all the pros and cons of this kennel, and just know the pros and cons of all of them are the same, they're the same great construction, so what we talk about today with the intermediate applies to the medium, the small, and the large as well. Well, let's dive right in. We've got the intermediate here. Like I said earlier, pretty much everything is the same between the sizes. First, let's talk about the weight of these units. They're heavy, so that's both a pro and a con. It's a con because who likes carrying something heavy, but it's a pro because that's how it, this thing is so strong. So uh, like they mentioned when we were at, at the facility earlier, this is double walled plastic. It's not thin. It's not like if you're used to like a very kennel or one of those really thin plastic kennels, this is nothing like that. You know, it's a heavy crepe. That's why there's these handles on the top. The handles are awesome. Now this one does not have wheels. The large does, which is nice because the large is absolutely massive. So the handles are really important. You look on the outside, you saw we have these tie down straps that we use when I put it in my truck. But now just kind of looking at it in general, the door, that's the first thing I check on any kennel because the door is where a dog generally breaks out. And on this, there's nowhere else the dog is getting out besides this door. It's the only kind of chance they have. The door is awesome. So if you take a look at it, first of all, the door is reversible, which is great. You can just take this off and put it on the other side. You, I think you have to you know, remove the strike plate here and just kind of flip it around. The reversible door is really important because depending on your vehicle, you might want it on a, you know, opening it a different way. Now, the door itself has a couple of cool features. One is it locks, there's a key so you can lock this. So if you were using it somewhere like in the bed of your truck or even in your vehicle, if you were worried about someone breaking in, um, the dog would be a lot safer with that locked. And then we also have these here, which are uh, extra like locks, they throw a bolt up into the frame. So when these are, when these are up and down, this thing is incredibly secure. It's pretty awesome. 
And the reason it works so well is there's this frame that runs all the way around that the bolts can go into. So super secure door. You might also notice on it, there's a bowl here. And if you look on the outside, there's a funnel. So you can put water in from the outside. It can be, you know, of course, if you're using this in the bed of the truck, it could be really helpful for that. But even in the house, if you were to put the dog in and realize you need to give them some water, you could pour it from the outside and it goes into this nice bowl that's attached to the, to the wall. Unless your dog is a chewer and wants to destroy it, this bowl is pretty tough. You know, if you have a power chewer, they could obviously chew through the bowl because it is plastic. It's a tough plastic, but it, in theory, it could be chewed through, so keep an eye on that. Now, these kennels are made for working dogs, so there's some nice features to go along with that. One is on the inside, you can see there's kind of a, a channel around the outside that goes to a drain plug. So this is made, you can pull the plug and very easily hose this thing out and get it nice and clean. Also, if your dog was a little bit wet or they were to pee, in theory, some of that liquid is gonna get into the channel on the side. They're still gonna get wet, of course, or be wet, but some of the excess liquid can kind of drain to the back to that drain plug. And when you're ready, you pull the plug and can hose it out. Also on the sides here, the kennel has these really nice large vents. A lot of plastic kennels just have like these little holes around them. This has these huge vents to allow a cross breeze all the way around. And then you can see on the back of the kennel, there's also some there. And of course the front of the kennel itself uh, is perforated so you can get airflow all the way around the kennel. Now, as I mentioned before, this kennel is made for working dogs. So th there's a lot of features that tie into that. Uh, we already talked about these you know, uh, handles that you can tie it down with, but also just the kennel itself, it's stable. It has a wide base. It'd be very hard to tip over. So if you have a dog who's wild in their crate that's trying to break out and rock it, uh, when they're in there with their weight, it would take a lot to flip this thing over, unlike a, you know, a light plastic kennel. Now, one add-on I want to mention to you, we have the Chew Proof set put on this kennel. So this does not come with the kennel. You have to buy it separately from Gunner. What it is, it's a series of steel plates. They're powder-coated steel that are then screwed on anywhere the dog could conceivably break out. So we have one on the top of the door, one on the bottom of the door, one on each side and one on the back. So anywhere the dog sees an opening and they think, hey, I could escape from here and they might wanna to try to chew through the plastic. Even though the plastic is tough, it's not as tough as metal. So if your dog is an escape artist, I would absolutely buy these. Super easy to put on and it's literally just a screw all the way around it and you're good to go. The weakest part of any dog kennel is pretty much always gonna be the door. So for this test, I'm gonna climb in there and give it some hard kicks and we'll see if I can make my way out. If I can fit inside this thing, of course. I think you'll have to lock me in, cameraman. Okay, I am in, it is a tight fit. See if I can make my way out. You want to throw the extra bolts on the top and bottom? All right. Wow, this is a pretty strong door. Feels like I might have broken the bottom one, but I am kicking with both feet as hard as I can. I cannot imagine a dog getting any more force than this. I am kicking with two legs like crazy and my back is braced against the back side here. And the sides are, there's no give there. I cannot see a dog being able to smash its way through this door. Pretty darn tough. All right, I'm out of the kennel. Uh, I didn't break my way out though. And I thought this broke when I was kicking it, this bottom latch, but it actually didn't. All that happened is it somehow popped its way up and I think it might've been the force of my boots I was hitting in probably like an upward motion. So it kind of popped it out. But even when that came out, this one stayed here and this stayed shut. So really solid. Uh, and like I said, it's not broken because you can see here, it's still very solid. So it's a pretty darn tough door and it's hard to approximate the force a dog would have. But like I said, I had my back on the back of the kennel and I was kicking forward with my legs that's a lot more force than a, like a dog would be like running at it or uh, you know grabbing, trying to grab it and shake it. There's no way they'd have that much force. So I cannot see a dog smashing their way through this door. A lot of people use these kennels for hunting and have them in the bed of their truck. We were wondering what would happen if it fell out of the bed of the truck. So we're gonna run that test. We're gonna use a drone. I'm gonna be driving pretty quick, about 60 miles an hour. We're gonna let it fall out the back. I was thinking about rigging up this really cool system with an electronic timer that would automatically go off when I hit 60. Then I realized I know nothing about engineering. So we're gonna tie a rope to it and I'm just gonna let go at the right time.
Well, that was wild. Let's check and see what this thing looks like. Definitely got scuffed up some. You can see the door's a little wonky right now. But what I'm seeing actually is I didn't have these pins thrown all the way, which is part of the reason they have them. Because what I see right now is just these pins that stick out got damaged because they hit the ground, of course, at 60 miles an hour. We've got scrapes all over, but nothing big. And I think all this needs is a uh, bent, which I'm gonna do in a few minutes, bend it straight and lock those. Uh, and that's all the more reason to use them. If these have been shut, I don't think we'd have, it. there'd be nothing to bend there and they would look, I think they'd look perfect. But overall, door still works even with that. And I don't see any real damage. I just see uh, <laughs> a lot of scrapes from the 100 flips this sucker took. Handles are good, tie downs, everything looks fine. It's a tough crate. Before we start our next test, let's just kind of uh, recap what we just did. So you remember I was showing you these locks and they were kind of busted up from what was going on. I just took channel locks, bent them straight, and now they are locked, everything's good. And here, and everything is functional and good. So what this tells me, so full disclosure, I have never thrown a dog kennel out of a moving vehicle before and shot it with a drone. So that was uh, new to me. Probably should have locked it beforehand for that test. But we learned a good lesson there that if you're driving down the road with your dog in this, I would absolutely keep this lock and I would keep these up. I see no reason not to. It's so much stronger that way. And obviously if it's not locked, it's easier for it to come open. But on to the next test, let's have some fun. So I told you earlier, I had a surprise guest to be firing the gun, and I do. This is Christian Irvin, he is awesome. He's one of my buddies, he's a former Green Beret. And you can see from his shirt, he is the president of the Semper Grati Project. So he volunteered to be here today, but why don't you tell us a little bit about Semper Grati? Yeah, thanks Matt. The Semper yeah. Grati Project is a 501c3 out of Franklin here. Uh, we focus on three things for veterans. One, getting them through the VA. Two, helping them career transition to a company that's ready for them. And then three, winning the mental health battle after service. Love this guy, love the organization. We'll drop a link below if you wanna find out more about them, you wanna read up on them, donate, whatever. Of course, they would appreciate it. But now let's run our test. So I'm gonna turn it over to this guy. I'm gonna get my ear protection in. All right, let's see what kind of damage you Check did. Out. I see a heck of a dent. Yeah. Looks like a little penetration. There's the wad right there. At least the wad didn't make it through. I see a couple dents on the far wall. Certainly no holes on the far wall, but definitely a little bit made its way through. Yeah, you can see on the inside here, it exited into the, into the body. But did pretty well. So I wanted to stop here for a second just to give you some background and also put this into perspective. You might have seen Gunner did a similar test to this years ago where they shot their uh, kennel with a shotgun. And on their test, nothing went into the kennel whatsoever. Nothing penetrated. And our test that we just saw, some did penetrate. All in all, though, I would call this test a success. And the reason I say that is when they did it, we don't know were they, you know, an extra foot or two away or was their gun slightly different? Was their shot, you know, slightly different? I tried to approximate it as close as I could and I'm pretty darn impressed. So we hit it with a shotgun from really close and the vast majority just simply bounced off. A couple shells, you know, or a couple of BBs did make their way into the kennel, but this thing isn't actually made to be bulletproof. You would never shoot it with a dog inside, obviously. And I don't even know what, what this test is supposed to prove besides this thing is tough. So I would call this a pass and I'm pretty, in, you know, I'm pretty impressed, but we're gonna make this a lot harder right now. I'd say, let's make this a little bit harder. Get yeah. a little closer this time. Let's do it. <laughs> Look at that. Yep. I would say it doesn't handle it from closer, that's for sure. It's a slightly different result. <laughs> Look at the door. Well, I would say you should never shoot one of these with a shotgun from 12 feet. That seems like it can't handle that. Yeah. No bueno. <laughs> I'm not sure what could handle that. Probably no dog cage that's ever been produced. But that's some serious damage. All right. Hey, thanks for running this test. Appreciate it. Of course. It. Thanks for having me out. Okay, another recap. That close shot, obviously the kennel did not handle it incredibly well, but I don't think anything in the world would. Kennels aren't made to withstand a shotgun blast from that close. So we had fun, we had a blast, you know, no pun intended, but I don't think any kennel I've ever seen could have handled that shot. I still think the gunner kennel did pretty well. I'll tell you what, we have put this gunner kennel through the ringer today. We threw it out of the truck, shot it with the shotgun, 
All right, kicked it, you know, it's pretty, been pretty wild. Um, tried hard at all of our tests to see what it could handle. So our next one is just gonna be dropping this big old log on it. I would guess this way six, seven, 800 pounds somewhere in that area. So we're gonna see how the kennel handles that. Well, I would say this thing passed the tractor test. So we dropped it on there a couple of times. The worst damage I see is a little bit of bending right here where it did buckle just a hair. Like I said, this thing is a fresh log. It's wet, it's heavy. We dropped it on there a couple of times. I'm pretty impressed. This is the worst that happened. And at the end of the day, this isn't a bomb shelter, right? It's a dog kennel. So this thing has been put through the ringer today and I'm really impressed. So there's no higher stamp of approval I can give something and saying I would use it with my own dogs. I would absolutely put my dogs in this. I've never seen a kennel that's really this strong with this kind of testing. So everything we did today was meant to be fun, but it was also testing this thing uh, and it's strong. So I can't see any issues with this kennel. I don't think there's anything out there that's any stronger. I would use it in a heartbeat. If you've enjoyed this video, definitely hit the subscribe button. We have a lot of great dog training content and we're always reviewing new products. So if you've enjoyed this, subscribe and we'll get you a lot more stuff to watch.